we're going to be reading James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, okay? And um, as you remember, that's our subject, two kinds of wisdom, two kinds of wisdom. And uh, as we all know, who is the main character in the Bible about being a wise person? wisest person that is presented in the Bible, who is Solomon, right? Solomon, the, the wise king, okay? So one day, two women came before wise king Solomon, okay? And they were dragging between them a, a young man with, with his, you know, very rich suit, because uh, he was a businessman and he had inherited, inherited uh, the riches of uh, his parents. And so they dragged him into the presence of King Solomon. And uh, they said, King Solomon, we want you to settle this problem that we have. Okay? This young businessman agreed to marry my daughter. Then the other lady said, no, he agreed to marry my daughter. Okay. So they argued before the king until the king demanded silence. Silence. I have already decided what I'm going to do. Bring my biggest sword that I have. Because I'm going to cut this man in half and each of you can take a half of this man. Okay, one of the ladies said, fine, sounds good to me. Go ahead, king, do it. But the other woman said, oh, sir, please don't spill innocent blood. Let this other woman's daughter marry him. So the wise king did not hesitate for a moment. And he said, indeed, this young man must marry the first lady's daughter. Daughter, daughter. But you see, the, the king's court reacted and said, but king, uh, she was willing to cut him in half. Why are you allowing him to do that? And, and the king says, well, precisely because of that, she is showing to be a true mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm pretty sure mothers in love don't like that kind of joke, right? But it's just to, to um, illustrate um, about wisdom. And we know the real story about the uh, situation when Solomon really showed his wisdom to the point that the Bible says that throughout, all over the uh the known world in those days, they were coming to get wisdom from Solomon, to get advice from Solomon. That's how wise he was. And, and that because, you know, that was his priority. Okay? When, when God asked him, what is it that you want? He said, I want wisdom. So he got wisdom. Are you asking for wisdom to the Lord? Are you working to get wisdom to become a wiser person every day, every week, every month, every year? Are you content with the level of wisdom that you have and just stay there? So that's why it's important for us, you see, because um, when we talk about wisdom, we're talking about knowledge, having the knowledge of the Word of God. You know, wisdom that comes from God is the knowledge that comes from the Word of God and with the ability, because godly wisdom is very practical, is the ability to connect that knowledge of the Word of God to our daily living, to our circumstances, to the situations that we confront, our problems with our children, our problems with our parents, our problems at work, problems in church, problems in the community, problems in the nation and the whole world, so that you can be able to connect the Word of God 
to all those areas in life and then live it out, okay? Now that you're able to see the, the picture very clearly because you were able to connect all the pieces, okay? Now you're going to live it out. You're going to practice it. And that's wisdom. It's practical wisdom, okay? So that's why James is uh, comparing man's wisdom with God's wisdom. Okay? And that's the challenge that we have. Because by nature, what kind of wisdom do we have by nature? Man's wisdom. That's all we have, man's wisdom. Okay? But God's wisdom, it's not natural to us. We have to understand that. It's not natural to us. Is it natural to any man to be an expert on basketball, to play basketball at a very high level? Is it natural? No, it's not natural. What do we have to do? Practice and practice and practice and practice and, and, and learn and apply the learning because somebody's going to have to teach us. If you really want to get to a, a high level, somebody's going to have to teach you and you have to learn and, you, and then you have to apply it and then you have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, leave it out, leave it out, leave it out, leave it out. The same way with wisdom because it's not natural for us. Okay? We have to learn, and that's the word of God. We have to learn it, okay? And then we have to apply it and live it out and practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it constantly, constantly, constantly. If not, we're not going to have God's wisdom. It doesn't matter if you, don't, if you don't fail to come to church. If you all the time you come to church without missing any Sunday, you come, you come, you come, and you think that automatically just because you come to church you're going to become wise? No, okay? There are many nowadays, right now, that are, they're not missing any playoff game, watching all the playoff game, and they see everything. Do you think that after the, the end of the season they are experts at playing basketball just because they watched all the games? No. They know about who played better and who won and what happened, and they, they know all those facts, but it doesn't mean that now they are the new LeBron James in town. Okay? No way. You're going to have to really work on that. The same way you want to be a wise person, you're going to have to really work on that. Okay? And we already covered the first point, the contrast in origins. These two different kinds of wisdom come from different sources. It says, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual and demonic. So you see, which one is natural to us? The first one or the second one? The second one. And look, it is earthly. Okay. So that means that it, it is from this world system, and then it is unspiritual, that is from our flesh, from our unspiritual nature, our fallen nature, and it's, uh, and it's demonic, okay? Influenced by Satan and his demons, influenced by that. So, can us, as Christians, can you be content with ju just having the natural human wisdom, can you be content with that? No, we shouldn't be content. On the contrary, if we truly believe the Word of God, you got to say, no way, I'm really going to work hard to get rid of this kind of human, unspiritual, demonic wisdom. And I'm really going to replace it by spiritual wisdom, the wisdom that comes from God. And really work on it. Okay? Do whatever is necessary. Whatever is necessary to have that kind of wisdom. If not, you know, I don't care if you keep coming to church. Your lifestyle is just going to be like the world's lifestyle. Why? Because the world is operating with the second kind of wisdom. And if you don't truly become spiritually wise, then 
you're just going to look the same. Your lifestyle, the results of your life are just going to be exactly the same. They're, 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 you won't be able to see a difference between you and a person that is not a true believer. Okay, So that's why we need to be careful. And then number two, we already covered the contrast in operation. They operate in, in different manners. Earthly wisdom, we learn in verse 14, that, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. We went through all the little, all the words here and the implications of how this kind of wisdom operates. Well, it operates according to the flesh, under the power of the flesh, and under the power of this system, according to the philosophies and ethics and morals of this system. And that Satan is behind this system, working on this kind of wisdom. Uh, there you find disorder and every evil practice. And the heavenly wisdom operates differently, he says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And that's what we cover last week this kind of wisdom. So now we're going to finish with number three, the contrast in outcomes or results. A comparison between the results of each kind of wisdom. Okay, well, first of all, let's look at earthly wisdom and what can we expect from earthly wisdom to produce troubles. Hmm? Troubles. And that's what happens. You're operating under that kind of wisdom, and you're going to have problems, troubles in uh, relationships. You're going to have trouble here and there and everywhere. And suddenly, you, you're going to just end up blaming everything around you for all the troubles that you are experiencing, but without really understanding that it's because of how you operate, okay, that you're operating under this kind of wisdom, this kind of knowledge that is not from God. It's not from God. It's earthly. Okay? It's human wisdom. It is from the flesh, from our sinful nature. Therefore, what can you expect? What kind of result can you expect from a sinful nature? That's all. That's all that you can expect. So, that's why it says, any place, that's verse 16, this is the, um, the translation, it's called voice, okay? And in parentheses, we have, look, it says, any, any place where you find bitter envy and selfish ambition, you will discover chaos, okay? That's, that's the word in the Greek, akatas, akatastasia, akatastasia and evil, okay? So those are the two outcomes that we can expect, okay, from this kind of wisdom, chaos and evil. And we're going to look at those words in more detail so that we can understand the results, the outcome of this kind of, uh, of, of wisdom, okay? Chaos. So, and it is important for us to, to understand this because you see everything begins here okay, remember that we have a spiritual battle right and the, and the spiritual battle is waged here in our mind okay right here in our mind this is where we're gonna decide the outcome of our life if we are truly going to believe the Word of God or not, if we're truly going to work on, on becoming spiritually wise, or I'm going to remain just the way that I am naturally, with man's wisdom only and not God's wisdom, I'm, I'm going to decide that. Here, in, in my mind, that's going to be the spiritual battle. That's why, you know, wrong thinking, when, when you are operating under 
human wisdom, then you're operating un under wrong thinking. And wrong thinking produces wrong feelings. And those wrong feelings produces wrong living. Okay? I have noticed time and time again people that ask me, but Pastor, look at it. Say, you know, everything comes from, from here. First of all, the way you think is wrong. And that's why your feelings are wrong. And now your life or your actions are wrong. So where do you want, where do you, do you want me to begin with? Okay. Because sometimes people think that, you see, the last thing here is produces wrong living. Okay. Just help me fix the wrong living. I cannot, I cannot work on that. We got to begin from the start. Okay. From the start with the thinking. Okay. Because if we only begin with the living, we're just fooling ourselves. Nothing's going to change, really. Because it, it's, it has to, become, to begin at the root of the problem. And that's the thinking, okay? What we believe. So if we're operating under human wisdom, our thinking is going to be wrong, our feelings are going to be wrong, and our decisions, our living, our life, is going to be wrong, okay? And, and you cannot fix it just by praying. Somebody say, well, I'm going to pray hard so, so that God can change my living, my circumstances. No, it doesn't work like that. If you really want to pray, pray so that God can transform your mind. Hmm? And the transformation of your mind, according to the scriptures, according to Romans 8, is through the word of God. Through the word of God. To make an exchange. My ideas, my wisdom, my beliefs, exchange them for God's ideas, God's teaching, God's wisdom. It's got to be an exchange. Okay? But we have to work on that. Okay? And usually when we operate with human wisdom, you know, I have seen that people want instant Instant changes, they want instant solutions. Okay, just, just give me a, an instant, the bottom line solution, because I just want to, I just want to work it out right now. It's not like that. What you're only showing is that you don't want to really work on the real problem. Okay, you don't want to work on the real problem, and we have to be ready and willing to work on the real problem, okay? Because remember, James began this subject by asking, who is wise and understanding among you, okay? So he's expecting listeners to answer in their minds, in their hearts, to answer, am I really wise and understanding according to God's wisdom? I really? And then he says, okay, look at your life. Look at your life. By looking at your life, you're going to find out if you are truly operating under God's wisdom or under your own wisdom, human wisdom, earthly wisdom, demonic wisdom. Okay? Then you're going to find out for sure exactly what kind of word. So now, let's go to the word. This word, akatastasia, means disorder, confusion, chaos. And remember, what I have told you about the richness of the meaning of the word, okay? And, and that's why I, I show you, because I, I don't want you to make the mistake, like many people make the mistake. They see different versions, and they say, ooh, no, Nobody even, it's supposed to be this word, because, you know, I already read this version, the one that I have, but then I read it, and it uses another word. Mm, so who has the truth? There are, and they have asked me, look, I cannot believe the Bible, because, you see, there are many versions, and they interpret, they think that version is, is not the same way as saying translation. 
they think that it's like my own version. It's like, like when kids are having a, a, a fight or, and you come and say, hey, what's going on here? And say, oh, there, and the other one, okay, uh, and you have two different versions, right? So it's not like that when we talk about Bible versions that one writer is saying, well, I believe that this, 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 this. No, those are translations, okay, translations. And they're doing the hard work of looking at the original language. And when they see a word and they say, wow, this word in those days was rich in meaning like this. This order, confusion, chaos has the basic meaning of instability. Okay? Instability. And hence came to be used of a state of confusion, disturbance, disarray, chaos, or tumult, rebellion, or anarchy. Okay? All those things. So choose one. Because here, see, James is telling us, this is going to be the outcome of human wisdom. This is what you can expect with human wisdom, okay? This is what you can expect, all right? So that's what he's, he's, he, he's telling us. So he's cautioning his disciples. Jesus Christ, in this verse that I'm going to show you, he's cautioning his disciples about future false reports of his second coming and the end of the age. And this is what Jesus said. Okay? He said, when you hear of wars and uprisings, you see he's using the same word. Okay? Akatastasia. Do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Okay? And of course, it is fitting this word, akatastasia, in reference to the last days. Because we know that things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. Do you think the world, the system, is getting godly or more ungodly? More akatastasia. It's just becoming more and more and more and more and more. So Jesus is just giving a warning. And he's saying, hey, when you hear of uprisings, mm. uprisings. And don't you think that that's something that I have read a lot, different experts about the condition of our society here in the United States. And they say that if, if only this thing happens and these other things happen, we can end up having an uprising of the nation of people, like a revolution, okay? If only those, these two, three things happen and then people are working on these things to happen, like, don't you think you would be ready for an uprising if Christianity was illegal? Would you be ready for something like that? I don't know. It could very possibly be, okay? And little by little things, things like that, because, you know, you can try it in school, talk about the Bible, make a report about the Bible, and they're going to say, oh, no, 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 no religion here, but you can do it about Muslim. Ooh, you can do a, a work on, on Muhammad. You can come up with a, and, and they're going to say, yeah, okay, it was so good, like in, in school, it was, your report was so good. The next week is going to be Muslim Day. We want all the students to come dressed like Muslims. And there's nothing wrong with that, but do it in the, with Christianity. They're going to say, no, oh, oh, no religion allowed. Okay, no religion. So it's only Christianity, the one, the one that is not allowed. But other religions, tolerance, acceptable, but not Christianity. So we put little by little, little by little, we can get to this. But you see, the, I don't want to go to another subject about uh, the last days, but about the use of the words so that, so that you can truly appreciate different versions. Now, this is the NIV, New International Version. 
and use and, and the translators when they look at the word and the context they decided that look this is the more fitting word to use in the context of the last days uprisings okay now let me show you another version the same verse another version when you hear of wars and disturbances you see is the same word a catastasia in the greek so disturbances so now what I want you, as we go through this, to be applying and, and relating the outcome of this kind of wisdom with your life. Do you see that in your life? Disturbances in your life, okay, in your relationships? You see uprisings, disturbances, and then New Living Translation uses, and when you hear of wars and insurrections, the same word, a catastasia. But now they saw the word and said, insurrections. That it means when the people revolt. Okay? Revolt. Insurrections. Do you have that in your in your home? Insurrections? They revolt against your authority, your children? Hmm? When you hear about wars and riots, okay, New Century version, a catastasia the same, and they translated riots, okay. Now, are they saying the same thing? They're saying the same thing, but using a different word, right? Using the, and that's what I I want you to for you to learn so that you can explain other people and say. No, no, not even the Bible is in agreement. One Bible says one thing, another Bible says what, what they're trying to say is like this. They think that, it's, that there, there are contradictions in the Bible just because the translators are using a different word. Okay? But it's, it's just the same thing. Okay? Now, the same, the same uh, passage, different version, voice, says, you will hear about wars and conflicts. Okay. Now, what about your lifestyle? Is your lifestyle involved in constant conflicts? Conflict here, I have a conflict there, and I already are. And you know, we have to be careful. When, because when we operate with human wisdom, that's what we can expect. Conflicts and conflicts and conflicts. Okay. Godly wisdom is going to give you the love, the patience, the understanding, everything to not to get into conflicts, but to be a, a peacemaker, to be a peace promoter. That's what we already learned. Okay? So that's this other version, the voice. Now, King James Version. How does King James Version uh, translate this? But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, the same thing, but it's just said in a different way. Commotions, a catastasia. Okay? And this version is the one that was produced by Southern Baptist Convention. And, and it says, when you hear of wars and rebellions, they use the word rebellions. Okay? Now, if you are a rebellious person, what does that mean? That you're operating with spiritual wisdom or with human wisdom? Yeah. With, with the human wisdom, the worldly wisdom, the wisdom that comes from Satan, the demonic kind of wisdom, when you are rebellious, that you're rebellious against institutions, you're rebellious against leadership, you're rebellious against your parents, you're rebellious against your teachers, you're rebellious everywhere. You're rebellious. It is clear the Bible here is telling us it's because you're not operating in godly wisdom. Okay? On the contrary, you're just against institutions and authorities. Okay? And you see, this kind of wisdom affects Homes, 
churches and governments will be increasingly operating under worldly wisdom, okay? This is the only thing that we can expect, more and more and more and more. And do you want that for your home? To operate under a catastasia? Now that we understand what James is telling us with all the different versions, all the different words that he's using, do you want your home to, to have that kind of environment? Do you want your church to be under that kind of environment? How can we avoid that? By having a new pastor? Because usually that's, that's the solution of churches when the churches have conflicts. Oh, we need a change of pastor. When in reality it's about us, all of us collectively, that we need to really understand how are we are operating as a family? How are we operating as a, as a church family? How are we operating as a nation? Okay, How are we operating? Under worldly wisdom. So now we know the outcome. Okay, So at the beginning, you see the meaning of the word, akatastasia, it has the basic, basic meaning, instability, that you're not stable, okay? Okay, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you're not stable. Okay. And the Word of God says that the only thing that is stable is the Word of God. So when you operate morally, ethically, under God's Word, you're going to be stable. But if you don't work according to, if you don't operate according to the work of God, there's going to be instability. You're not going to be stable. Because look, in James 1.8, we already went through that, but it says, such a person is double-minded, unstable, okay, and unstable. And he's using the same word, a catastasia, in all they do, okay, in all they do, changing mind. No, well, I want to do no, but now, no, now I did. No, no, and unstable, unstable, changing mind, okay? So that's a sign that that person is not operating with godly wisdom, okay? It's not. So that's personally, okay? Personally and collectively also as a church, look at an example of a catastasia in a church. Second Corinthians, and I'm pretty sure you knew that I was going to the church in Corinth, right? Because that, that was the more unstable church in the New Testament. For I'm afraid, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, that when I come, I won't like what I find. Okay? He's saying, you see, I, I don't, for what I know, what I have heard, when I come to your church, I think I'm not going to like the environment, the conditions of your church, okay? And you won't like my response, okay? You're not going to like the way that I'm going to talk to you and deal with you, okay? Because I'm afraid that I will find quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorderly behavior, a catastasia once again, okay? Disorderly behavior. So when we have that kind of behavior, disorderly, that is not according to the word of God, we are operating under a catastasia. That means that I'm not operating under spiritual wisdom, God's wisdom, but under human wisdom, okay? I'm not personally and also collectively as a church or as a family. You know, the word that we use nowadays is it's a dysfunctional family, a dysfunctional church, a dysfunctional government. But in reality, it's an acatastasia home, an acatastasia person, a catastasia church, an acatastasia government that is disorderly. What is it that you really want? Okay? Because 
You see, origin determines outcome. Origin determines outcome. Worldly wisdom will produce worldly results. There's no other thing. Doesn't matter if you cry, if you try to manipulate people, try to manipulate circumstances in order for those things to change. Maybe you can change them, but it's just going to be an apparent change, superficial change. It's not going to be a real change. Because remember, the real change is going to have to be here in your mind. In your mind. Okay? In your mind. So, Verse 16, it says, any place where you find bitter envy and selfish ambition, you will discover chaos, a catastasia, and evil, paulos, striving under its true rule. Okay? So now, paulos, what's the meaning of this word? Ethically and morally bad. Okay? When we're not following biblical ethics and biblical morals, we're not operating with God's wisdom. That's what James is telling us. Okay. Without any good value. Okay. Without any good value. Okay. That's what it is. So this word is saying, look, if you are operating under the devil's wisdom, the world's wisdom, your flesh wisdom, then it's going to be easy for you to really operate unethically, immorally, okay? And the result of your decision, of your doing, is going to be with any good value before God's eyes. Before God's eyes, it was worthless. What you did, what you earn, whatever you earn, whatever you gain by doing something unethically, immoral, before God's eyes, is worthless. It has any, any, any value at all in God's sight. And that's contrary to really living for his honor and his glory. To living for his honor and his glory is that whatever we do, God is going to say, oh, this is worthy before my eyes. This is valuable okay, before my eyes. But that's only if we operate in godly wisdom that we can bring honor and glory to the Lord. Okay, now, we're finished with the earthly, human, devilish wisdom, the outcome, the results. Now let's look at heavenly wisdom. And what is it that is going to produce? Blessings. Okay? Blessings. And you see, the contradiction is that, you know, I'm operating with human wisdom, but... I crave God's blessings. I want God's blessings. And, 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 and when they find out that in order to get God's blessings, you have to operate under God's wisdom, they don't like it. They think that, that God is obligated to bless me. Why not? If I come to church, I don't fail coming to church. He's obligated to bless me. No, it's not like that. Okay? It's not like that. We need to understand that. That's why the Bible says here, and I'm giving you the amplified version. Okay? So whatever you see here in parentheses in black is what the uh, translators are giving us a little bit more explanation, synonymous of the words. It says, I'm going to read first the red, just the red, okay? And, this, and the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Okay? Now let's read with the parenthesis. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness, that means spiritual maturity, okay? So... The outcome of living according to God's wisdom is 
that you are going to grow in spiritual maturity. You're really going to be a mature Christian person. Okay? And the other way that we understand spiritual maturity is that you're going to be a spiritual person under the control of the Holy Spirit, not under the control of the flesh. Okay? That's what it means to be mature, to be under the control of the Holy Spirit, spiritually mature. So it says, is sown in peace by those who make peace by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals. Okay? The person with godly wisdom is going to be promoting unity, promoting peace, it's not going to be promoting divisions. It's not going to be promoting fights between people. No. I'm not going to be telling them, look, this person, that, and poisoning the mind, the heart, the, the way this person view another person. I'm not going to be poisoning that if I'm operating with God's wisdom. But if I'm operating under my own wisdom, fleshly, I have my own selfish agenda. That's what I want. I want that person to see and to consider that other person the way I see and the way that I consider that other person. Am I doing good to that person that I'm poisoning? Of course not. Just the word tells it clearly. I'm poisoning a person. I'm poisoning a person. Yeah, it's emotional and spiritual poison. But it's the same thing as giving that person, you know, just physical, natural, organic poison. The same thing. In God's eyes, it's the same thing as if you are giving a person a water with some drops of poison. Because you're going you're to be harming a person. Okay? But... Heavenly wisdom is going to produce blessings, okay, blessings. You're not going to be doing that. You're, you're spiritually mature. Maybe you know something about that person that is not right, that is wrong. So a spiritual person is just going to take it to the Lord. In prayer, Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister. I don't know. I don't even know if that person is really a true believer or not. But, Lord, but you know it. And, and you're going to be talking to the Lord. Not, you're not going to be talking trash about that person to others. That's not according to God's wisdom. And that could be very common. Common at home with family members. Could be very common at workplace. It could be very common here in church. It could be very common in the neighborhood. But just because it's common, it doesn't mean that it's right. And especially for us Christians, it's not right. It's not right to do it. Okay? Nowadays, they consider that they can, they can say whatever they want to say through the internet because it's not Personally, I'm not personally, what, what I'm not capable to do personally, I do it through the internet. And I can say whatever I want to say. And I just send poison. Poison here, poison there, poison everywhere. So I'm here just in my home. I'm not confronting personally anybody, so I can say whatever I want. No, as Christians, we don't, we're not supposed to have that kind of immaturity, okay? Immaturity. We should show that kind of spiritual maturity, okay? That we're showing righteousness and the seed whose fruit is righteousness. You see, what we have already acquired in our life by by get, being in the Word of God, by being in the presence of the Lord, by having communion with the Lord, is righteousness. And righteousness means a right relationship with God. So now, the fruit of my Christian life is that I'm in right relationship with God. And if I'm in right relationship with God, I am a mature Christian. 
and I'm going to behave in a mature way, okay, in a mature way. I'm going to love what God loves, and I'm going to do what God would do. That's what I'm going to do, okay? So that's what the Word of God is telling us, okay? Now, but we are able to see here in comparison is a fruitful life, okay? We see that as the result of operating in godly wisdom. Our life is going to be fruitful, fruit of the Spirit. But when we operate in the flesh, it's without any good value. The fruit of our life is going to be worthless before God. Worthless before God. Okay, godly wisdom, right relationship. Right relationship with God, right relationship with my neighbor, with people around me. But if I operate with human wisdom, then conflict relationships. My relationships are going to be in conflict. Everything. Conflict. 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 Relationship. Number three, okay, when you operate with godly wisdom, you're just going to grow in maturity, spiritual maturity. You're going to be more spiritual and more spiritual and more spiritual. But if you operate in Human wisdom, you're just going to remain immature. Immaturity, immaturity, and, and yeah, you're going to grow in immaturity also. Okay? So, the Bible says, Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who obtains understanding. Okay? Understanding. Blessed. It, it, it is a blessing. And you know, the word blessed, the, ble the word blessed means that you're going to be consistently happy, content. Consistently happy and content. So, you know, if you work on operating with godly wisdom, you're going to be consistently happy and content in this life. And if, you, if that's not you, it's because you're not operating under God's wisdom, okay? The Amplified Version, okay? This is exactly the same verse, but in the Amplified, and it says, Blessed, happy, consider fortunate, to be admired, okay? Your lifestyle is going to be admired, okay? Everybody's going to say, oh, how I wish I could have his life, the way he lives. Okay, that's the word blessed. Is the man who finds okay, skillful and godly wisdom. When you find wisdom, that kind of wisdom, is you're going to have the ability to be skillful in your relationships, skillful in your decisions, okay, skillful in everything that you have to confront. You're going to have the skills, godly skills. Okay? And the man who gains understanding, understanding means insight that you're able to see in a deeper way, okay? learning from God's word and life's experiences. Okay? You see? Is that what you want for you? You're going to have to work. You're going to have to work. Let, once again, let me show you. The way that you can gain wisdom, okay? Yeah, the Bible says, the Bible says, ask me. The Bible says, but it's got to be on the basis, okay? On the basis, because remember, everything God has a part, we have a part to do, right? Okay, God's part says, ask me, and I will do it. But you do your part, okay? And our part, that's where, where we fail. We want only God to do his part, but we don't want to do our part because God says, okay, you want to be understanding? Okay. You're going to have to read the word of God. Now, if you don't understand everything that is in the word of God, now what is the second step that you have to do? Hmm? What is the second step? When you read and you don't understand, what are you supposed to do? Study. 
So, but how? I don't have any Bible commentaries. I don't have. Okay, so that means that you're not doing anything to really get understanding. You're not willing to spend money to get a, a tools to get understanding from the Word of God. You want things to come by what? By a, just a miracle? By a miracle, you won't get really uh, understanding of the Word of God. You're, you're going to have to study. And once you study, that means now I understand it. Okay. Once you understand it, now you meditate. You take the time in meditation to allow the Holy Spirit to give you understanding so that you can see how this new understanding of the Word of God applies to my life. Applies to my life by meditating. Now, does it take time to do this process? Are you willing to do that? That's the problem, you see. And then, after you meditate and God gives you that understanding, that insight, now, you have to memorize. You have to memorize a verse or a passage that is helpful in your spiritual battles. Because we all have spiritual battles in different areas, so we all need different verses. So you memorize the Word of God so that you can be like Jesus, that when temptation came, when Satan came, he confronted with the Word of God that he had already memorized. Humanly speaking, he had to memorize the same way that we have to memorize. There, there was, n you cannot say, well, but he was God. No. The Bible says that, in, that in, in his incarnation, his attributes as God, he put them aside and he operated as human, just like God. So he learned, the Bible said that he learned. So by learning, he memorized scripture and he, the moment that he needed, when he was tempted, Holy Spirit remind him those verses, and he was able to defend himself from Satan. So memorization. So once we do those four things, we read the Word of God, we study the Word of God, we meditate the Word of God, we memorize the Word of God now, what are we going to do now? We're going to apply it. Now we're going to apply it. You see, and when we follow that, then you can openly ask God, God, give me wisdom. He says, yes, I'm going to give you wisdom. You did your part. I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to give you wisdom like Solomon. I'm going to give you wisdom. But it's not magic that you just, because you say, oh, Lord, give me wisdom. I'm a wise person. So I really prayed with faith. Nope, it's not like that, okay? Are you willing to do that? If you want godly wisdom, it's just going to be up to you. If not, now you know, yet you're not ignorant now. You know the outcomes of both kinds of wisdom. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time. And we thank you, Lord, because your word is clear. And Lord... Help us to really put it into practice, to really do what is necessary to become spiritually wise, according to your word, Lord, according to this passage of James. Lord, we took four sessions to go through it with the only reason and goal for us to understand it so that by understanding that we can truly put it into practice. So Lord, help us to do that important step in our lives, to put it into practice and to truly do what is needed for us. The part that belongs to us to read and study and meditate and memorize scripture so that we can truly apply it under the power of your Holy Spirit. But we thank you, Lord, because it is available for us. The moment that we do our part, you do your part, Lord. And we can be sure that we are going to operate 
under the supernatural wisdom that comes from you, Lord. We pray it and we ask it in Jesus' name and for his our honor and glory only. Amen.